What is science? The moment we hear the word science, we tend to think of different types of equipments, instruments, and laboratories. Does science mean different types of machines, new inventions, and new ways of industrialization? Or is science related to different types of experiments and various inventions based on these experiments? Can science be anywhere else other than laboratories, equipments, machines and mechanical ways? Let us have a look at various things and events around us. These children, playing seven stones, know that if they arrange these stones in such a way that the broadest stone is at the bottom and the smaller ones placed above, these stones will remain stable. If the stones are arranged in the reverse order, it would be difficult to balance them. How do they come to know that? For stability, the base should be broader and heavier, only on the basis of their experience. It is rather difficult to move this heavy stone. But if a force is applied with the help of a long rod by keeping a small stone as the fulcrum, the heavy stone can easily be removed. How did they know it? On the basis of their experience. Does gaining of knowledge on the basis of experience be termed as science? On the basis of her experiences, this housewife knows how much quantity of rice is required for each meal. She also knows that before washing the rice, she will have to pick out the stones. She knows that rice husks, being lighter than water, will float and can be separated by cleaning rice with water. To save her cooking time, she places a stone on the lid of the rice can. Does this process not look like a scientific one? On the basis of her experience and observations, the housewife knows the right quantity of rice, just as a scientist measures the exact amount of material for performing an experiment. By, by her experience and observation, she knows that the stones mixed in rice will sink to the bottom, while rice husks, etc., will float in water. That is why, before cleaning the rice with water, she picks out stones, etc., and separates the lighter husks, etc., by allowing them to float on water. Isn't the scientific method somewhat similar to this? On the basis of her observation and experience, she presses the lid of the rice can to save the cooking time. Does not the kitchen of a housewife resemble a small laboratory?
In this laboratory of hers, even without knowing the laws of solubility, she knows that sugar takes a longer time to dissolve in cold water, whereas the same amount of sugar is easily soluble in hot tea. Is science then finding out hidden laws and their mutual relationship on the basis of various experiences? On the basis of his experience, this farmer knows when it will rain. When it will be appropriate to sow the seeds. What will be the distance between the seeds while sowing them? When to water his fields? How to take care of his crop? Is this knowledge of the farmer gained by his experience also scientific? It is true that in scientific method, gaining knowledge through experience is an important factor. But scientific method is not only limited to experiences. The farmer, through his experience, may have the knowledge of climatic conditions and soil of his area. But this knowledge cannot be applied universally in other places and situations. That is why, before forecasting the weather, information is gained with the help of different equipments in a more scientific way. This information is more reliable than the information given by the farmer. But at times, it is not possible to give accurate weather forecast because it depends on many variables. But observation, experimentation and analysis have their own importance in finding out various scientific principles. With continuous experimentation, observation and analysis, it is possible to find out scientific laws hidden in various day-to-day -day experiences. From our general experience, we know that whenever an opaque object comes in the way of light, its shadow is formed. What is the speciality of light rays? What are the hidden laws in formation of a shadow? Performing experiments in different situations and analyzing the inferences on the basis of observations and to verify the various assumptions, that is the scientific method. But before any assumption is made, many questions arise. If shadows are formed, then why are they formed? How are they formed? The basis of this how and why is our curiosity. It is this curiosity which inspired man to invent. It is this curiosity which inspired man to observe nature and find out the wonders of nature. This curiosity made him question, if the sky is blue, why is it blue? Where are the sun, moon and stars? How far are they from us? Why are the leaves green? It is that curiosity which prompted the question, why do all things fall to the earth? It was one of the greatest achievements to reach up to the laws of gravitation from this curiosity of falling things. And it was Newton who could find the answer. After seeing the birds flying came the curiosity, how can these birds fly? Can't we fly too? Is it possible to fly with the help of wings? Or is something else required to fly? And to find the answer of this, man even tried to fly with the help of wings. When after performing his experiment, Bernoulli found that if air is blown over a piece of paper, the piece moves up because pressure of the air below the paper is more than that above the paper. Only perhaps he might not have realized 
that he had opened the possibilities of air journeys. The question emerges, is a rising of curiosity also science? In that case, perhaps, every child is a budding scientist, as his small mind is full of questions. He is always curious to know, to touch, to experiment about things, to find solutions to various problems. And since we seldom encourage this curiosity of a child, we often prevent a future scientist to grow and develop. This is a question for us, parents and teachers, to ponder over. Can we not encourage the curious nature of a child so that he is able to analyze various experiences of his life in a scientific way? What is this scientific method? Is it only limited to curiosity, observations, experimentations and analysis? The sum of three angles of a triangle is equal to 180 degrees, or two right angles, can be verified by measuring all the three angles of various triangles. But by sequential logic also, it can be analyzed that the sum of all the three angles of a triangle is equal to two right angles. Then, can scientific method be termed as verification of knowledge by sequential logic? Two groups are. Yeah, this is one, which is four. Uh, 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 on each assumption or hypothesis, okay. it is and logic are, which poses questions. And these two represent two different Since scientific yes. assumptions are not proved by consensus, mm -hmm. yeah, then yeah, even one this contradiction will lead to a re-examination of the entire assumption. They can be arranged in a mirror image form. So there you have the blue, blue and the red. In spite of that, yes. And the image is superimposable with the object. But yet, what we can do is just by a little twist, they become in in space. So in space, that is why today we question all the old assumptions, and at times find them contradictory, as there is no logic in them. By the assumption that we should worship the trees, we would like to interpret that the trees must be preserved. Worshipping does not mean that on one hand we worship some trees and on the other we cut down the forest. Today it is a scientific truth that as the forests are being cut, critical situations are being faced either in the form of floods or droughts. Everybody is of the opinion now that the environment can be preserved only if the forests are preserved and there won't be a single person who would deny the importance of forests. That is why in our day-to-day -day life we start questioning many a thing. For example, can a parrot be a fortune teller? Most of us are anxious to know our future but how far is it possible? In one person's life, there can be countless number of incidents. Hence, can future incidents of millions of people be predicted with the help of these few chits of paper? Have we ever tried to find out how many of these predictions come true? Though prediction of future does not come under this scientific method, but predicting physical phenomenon on the basis of various scientific principles 
has been an important aspect of science. Many new theories have been explained by this free notion or intuition. But nothing is an absolute truth in this scientific method. Assumptions are made and at the same time they are ruled out. Many scientists discuss their experiences, experiments and observations and after logical verification the hypothesis is confirmed. Very similar to the example of the three persons who, after tying a bandage onto their eyes, tried to recognize an elephant. These three men touched different parts of the elephant's body. The one who touched the tail described it as a rope. Another, who touched the trunk, described it as a snake. The one who touched the leg described it as the stem of a tree. They all felt that they had described the same thing in three different ways and thus, scientifically, they had contradicted each other's views. When they re-examined the elephant in detail, they found that what they thought to be a rope was, in fact, the tail of an animal. The snake was the trunk and the stem the four feet of an animal. After this, they came to the conclusion that this animal can be nothing but an elephant. What then is science? It is to accept nothing on face value. It is to take nothing for granted. It is to keep on experimenting, observing and analyzing. It is to keep the curiosity alive. Why? What? How?